I just wanted to talk to you when the decision making was going on between you and Penny about how this was going to go. You know, yeah. wh when was it that she decided to stay home and what was the thinking about? Was it figuring that she and Leo would be safer in Phoenix or was there some talk about maybe they'd be safer with you in Florida? Well, I think it literally was an hourly decision of coming, not coming. Um, and ultimately, we just thought it would be safer for them to, to stay in, in Phoenix. Uh, you know, for four four months, three months now, we've literally quarantined in the house with, with just us. And, you know, as safe as the bubble, I think, is, you know, you're automatically exposed to 200 plus people. So just for the safety of, of Penn, obviously, Leo uh, being so little and, you know, our family in general, uh, it was probably the best decision. It was a hard decision. Uh, it's a long time to, to be away from your family. All right, we'll go to, over to Michelle Vopel, followed by Michelle Smith. Uh, hi, Diana. You, you know, I, all through the, uh, the tour with USA Basketball, you kept saying you're getting closer and closer, but it was mm -hmm. just a matter of how your body felt. Where are you right now? How, how, how good do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel great, uh, you know, after two days of training camp, to be able to get through everything. Um, you know, that to me is an accomplishment alone. And, uh, you know, I just got to keep working at it every single day, getting a little bit better, uh, being a little bit smarter. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not going to get any, any easier. I'm not getting any younger. And uh, I just got to put a little bit more work in, uh, you know, in the weight room and the treatment room and things that, uh, you know, my body needs to be on the court. So uh, it's been a, a, a pretty rough two years. Uh, and I think it's, it's finally starting to pay off. I will go over to Michelle Smith, followed by Cameron Cox. Hey, Dee. Uh, can you talk a little bit about just getting these first days of playing with Skylar and developing chemistry and, you know, what you think she's going to add to the team and what you think it shall, how she'll enhance what you do and how she'll change what you do? Oh, it, it's, it's already been a, a pretty easy adjustment. You know, I've gotten to spend time with Skylar on USA basketball. I've watched her play since, you know, she was in college at Notre Dame. Uh, I've always admired her, her, her fight, her energy, um, her willingness to do the, the really hard things and, uh, and her work ethic. Um, you know, in these first two days already, we see the benefits of having another playmaker on the court, someone else that can handle the ball. And, you know, I, I told her from day one, uh, your first team all WNBA, you should be that again this summer. Nothing changes with BG on the court, with me on the court. You know, we need Skylar to be, you know, one of the best players in the league. And uh, she's to accept that goal. All right, over to Cameron Cox, followed by Doug Feinberg. Diana, thank you so much for the time. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you've seen and done probably just about everything in basketball. So where does this compare uh, to <laughs> what you're going through now? To how would you how would you put that against everything else? I mean, it's it's uncharted waters. Uh, you know, I've I feel like I've uh, I was made for quarantine in the bubble after spending ten years in Russia. I know being in an apartment by yourself for many months uh, and not having many people to talk to. So. To me, that, that's nothing unusual. Uh, and, you know, you take solace in being on the court for two hours. That's the, literally the only part of life that's normal right now for, for us being in here. And, you know, I shared this with my team earlier that it's a huge sacrifice that we're all making to be here, leaving family, friends, whatever it may be. Everyone has a different reason. Um, you know, and when we're on the court, we've got to make the best of it. Th these are the times that we can actually enjoy and, and, and really pour ourselves into each other. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. Um, but that's when you rely on each other. All right, we have Doug Feinberg, followed by Brendan Clean. Hey, D, it, you mentioned a little bit, is this similar to what it's like playing overseas? Forget mm -hmm. the COVID factor, but just like the isolation, you go to play basketball for two hours, go back to your room, I mean, you have more friends now, I guess, who are mm -hmm. American versus when you play overseas. Is it similar right. to that? I mean, it's, it's, it's like an Olympics, Final Four, World Championships, you and it's just all together you know where you see all the teams you eat with them and in, in the practice gym so there's the, the same you come you do your job and then you have to find a way to to stay you know mentally safe for the next you know eight hours of, of the day and uh you know i'm lucky we have a great team here we have great support um I mean, you know it's different now you have facetime uh you have all those things where you know, my first couple of years overseas, you didn't have those things. You literally didn't even have internet. Um, so, you know, you make the best out of it. We have uh, Brendan Clean now, uh, followed by Cheryl. 
Hey, Diane, I'm just curious, uh, kind of open-ended for you, what changes about being like a team leader in a situation like this? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's not easy. Uh, and, you know, these are times where you need a lot of people to lead. You need a lot of people to show up and, and show their character. And, you know, I think that's what we tried to do with putting this team together. There's people that had high character. Obviously, they're all great basketball players. You know, but it's fragile. You know, any little thing of irresponsibility, um, any attitude of thinking that, uh, you know, your actions don't affect the next person. At any minute, this thing can shut down if you, take the wrong, if you make a wrong decision. So I think we're all pretty serious about that, and we, we take that responsibility, um, you know, to heart. And I think every single person does. That's why, you know, up to this point, it's worked for, for us. I will go ahead and then follow by Colin Harmon. Um, you talked a little bit about how this is uh, different uh, from the regular season. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, but what are the advantages of having all the players there, um, you know, since you, you know, been with USA Basketball in that setting where there are players from across different, different teams? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm a person that when I'm in season, I really don't like talking to anyone. So <laughs> the only advantage is uh, I get to see my teammates a little bit more, but you know, as far as seeing other people from other teams, I really, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty laser focused on taking care of our group. And, you know, that's where I stand with that. I will go over to Colin Harmon. And then after that, a few more, um, followed by Eric, let's double check here, followed by Gabe. Hey, Diane, I hope you're doing well. Uh, can you just describe, I guess, a little bit of what a day in the life in the bubble mm -hmm. is like? I mean, we see so much from the, the NBA with, you know, the food that people are talking about. I mean, how is everything being treated for you guys over there? I mean, you know, the first, the first couple of days is always rough. Um, you know, working out the details, working out the things you can and can't do. Um, obviously, we had the two-day, three-day lockdown where, you know, you were literally supposed to stay in your room, eat, and hang out just to make sure uh, that the testing went through and the protocol. And kind of, you know, the bubble mirrors the world. It's not the protocol, it's the people that make it work. And hopefully uh, we have enough people that make it work. But the days that we've had practice so far, um, so now it's noon. I'll probably go get some lunch, um, you know, hang out a little bit. We have testing at 4.30, uh, then treatment afterwards. And, you know, you do it all again. Uh, you kind of lose track of what day it is. Uh, that's for sure. All right, uh, final three here. We'll go Gabe, followed by Alexis, and then Erica. Go ahead, Gabe. Uh, thanks for taking the time, DT. I really appreciate it. Um, do you, you said you guys are making a big sacrifice, and, you know, that's yeah. coming off the court, but you guys are all – you're going to have to make a sacrifice on the court with all these new players and people taking the ball. How do you approach all of this at the same time for you personally and then as a leader of the team? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, we've been on some Zoom calls together as a team, and uh, – like I said, huge sacrifice to, to be here. And, and the players who opted out, um, totally respect that. Um, you know, everyone has different circumstances in their life which dictated their decision to come here. And, and I, you know, there was no right, there was no wrong um, answer to that. But I said, once we're here, no excuses, you know. But we signed up for it. Um, it's not going to be easy. Uh, there are going to be times where it's difficult uh, that you're not seeing your family. Um, also, at the same time, you know, there is a pandemic that's happening in this country and it's hitting Florida pretty hard. All these are realities you can't just ignore. Uh, but I think the more we can talk about it and the more we can make sure we stay, uh, you know, connected as a group and, and making the right decisions every day, you know, uh, it'll give us a chance to be there at the end. All right, final two, we'll go Alexis, then Erica. Hey Dee, I wanted to quickly just get your thoughts on um, Brianna Turner and kind of her just being a, a really vocal leader you yourself have been very vocal about just anything that's on your mind, right? But Breezy has kind of taken yeah. her, you know, really taken a step into a role of being a leader and activist um, and just kind of your thoughts on, on her growth and, and development in that. I mean, I, I think it's refreshing. Uh, you know, Breezy is a very intelligent person. She has a lot of things um, that she wants to communicate and she does it in a way where, you know, I, I think connects with a lot of people. Um, so when I saw, you know, you know, things online and interviews, you know, that's the breezy that we got to know last summer. And, and you know, she's continued that this year, too. And uh, I, I think for her, it's just a way of opening up all her thoughts and all her opinions and all, all her, you know, life experiences. And 
I, I think the more we hear from her, the more refreshing it is to know the reality of things. All right, Erica, last person, go ahead. All right, hola, Diana, thank you for your time. Uh, I spoke to you last year in Vegas, you and Sue Bird, we were talking a okay. little bit about um, just the, the opportunity missed when you have a league that is over 80% black women and also has a, a population that identifies as LGBTQ queer um, to utilize those voices. Mm -hmm. uh, we're almost a year out from that. I'm curious um, if you think that things have changed, particularly thinking about that new CBA and now the Social Justice Council. I think everything's been ch changed in the last, you know, couple months. Everything's been turned upside down where, you know, uh, from the uncomfortable conversations to, you know, social action, um, there are things that we're just not willing to stay silent about anymore. And um, whether it's Black, Black Lives Matter, which is something that the league and uh, a lot of people in the WNBA support and will continue to support whether people don't like it. Um, you know, those are things that are, that are strongholds for us and we're not gonna let go of those things. Um, you know, we've made strides in a lot of different social areas and, you know, Black Lives Matter should have been number one from the beginning. And I think you, you see a lot of people stepping up in that role to make sure that uh, our voices are heard. And um, like I said, not everyone's gonna like it. Some people are gonna feel uncomfortable, but you know, that's life. Uh, a lot of people in this country have felt uncomfortable for a long time already.